back. Hey, we're back. Uh, uh, live, right? We're up. Okay, uh, uh, mini son of Monster Palooza. It's a tongue twister. Anyhow, uh, thanks so much for Alan Scott for dropping by. That was fantastic. Um, but I have with me probably a person who I have known the longest out here. Yeah. Um, Mr. Michael S. Deke. Um, Mike Deke. Um, I met Mike Deke at John Beekler's MMI. Yeah. I was brought in. What was the project, though? Can you can you remember that? Yes, I can. Very good. The Lawnmower Man. Really? Was that what yes, it was? Yes, it was the Lawnmower Man. Man. <laughs> Wait, what were you going to say? Uh, no, I didn't know. I had no <laughs> idea. It's like, I, there were so many things going on at that time. Can I just interrupt for a second? Yeah, of I just recently, um, I was uh, asked oh, do to you want, do... Do you got a water? Yeah, yeah, I do have water. Okay, yeah, water. It's, it's, it's I just right. want to make sure. Yeah, all right. We're going to be talking for three hours. Three hours. Yeah. Do you have any Jack Daniels? <laughs> yeah, uh, well, yeah. There will be a bullet ride. We got a bullet. Well, that that work. <laughs> no, I just recently, I, yeah. one more man, I, I was asked to uh, contribute in a, some of the uh, special features for a Blu ray because I was doing something for uh, a documentary for uh, the Empire films that I was okay. working on with uh, uh, Daniel Griffith. And uh, and I and he was saying he wanted me to talk about Lawnmower Man and what I did on it. And I went, I don't remember what I did on Lawnmower Man. I remember there was one shot where a guy got shot in the head and uh -huh. I made the blood splatter against the wall, but I had to go back and start watching going like, they cut out everything. <laughs> no, we were, we were, high, well, you were there, but, and I can't remember what John specifically brought me in for. I think it was for seed people. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. But this is one of those things that kind of like, well, that's sort of on hold. Let's do this. Because this just popped into the shop. So it was Lawnmower Man. So that was Jeff Fahey is in that. Right. Pierce Brosnan. Before he before was James, he was James Bond. Bond. Yeah. Um, which was really cool. But yeah, so we shot a guy in the head. And it was like old old time effects. I mean, it yeah. was like dermal wax. The, the pull, pull wire button, gag, yeah. It was like the Dick Smith gag, yeah. basically. So we did that. And I remember uh, Rob Matsui yep. was on that and did like a blistered stop motion animation yeah. blistering gag. And there's also like a collapsing head. That was the thing that I got saddled with. Ah, that was you. You and I both. You and I both yeah. were on that. I mean, because I was fresh, fresh, fresh. I was straight out of a makeup school. And because I just told the story with, with Alan Scott where John interviewed me, looked at my book, said, yep, you're good. And I said, so when do you want me back? And I've got on my nice slacks and shoes. And he goes, start now. And, you know, I always say, I always remember Mike Deke is the person who taught me how to tamp fiberglass. <laughs> Out in the parking lot with a cigarette. <laughs> Never hold your cigarette directly over the fiberglass <laughs> while you tell <laughs> Lean back always. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, so it was, day, yeah. it was a collapsing head. So yeah. we had a torso and we had all these little Dacron lines yeah. that went into this mold sculpt. I don't know who did the sculpt, but um, yeah. I can't remember. We also got a, a Deke from Henrik Van Rysen. Oh, wow. <laughs> Henrik! Henrik! Deke! <laughs> Henrik um, was there when he saw me do a stage dive on uh, Lord of Illusions. So, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lord of Illusions. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we did that, that head gag. So it was supposed to implode yeah. and crush and all this stuff. So the one thing I remember, Beekler kind of just threw that at me. You were giving me tips because you were in and out of the shop and you were trying to help wrangle gags. So it was John Foster, John Beekler, yeah. and yourself. And I don't remember Rod Mitsui was there, but other than that, it was just us. And I was brand new. I had no idea what I was doing. So he saddles me with this gag. And, um, boy, I'm so old, I'm, I'm forgetting what's going on. Oh, this is what he did. So we're trying to think of all these different materials. This stuff is supposed to crumble, right. turn into yeah. ash because the, the character's gone into the computer and what's left is just this, this hull of a person that's supposed to crumble. So we can't figure out exactly how we're gonna do it, what we're gonna do it. John Beekler hands me a phone number. Give this guy a call. See if he's got any materials that you know are, are crumbly and crushy and something that we can paint into a banana skinned silicone mold. Okay. Well, you remember a lot more of this than I do right so, now. No, no. <laughs> this is why I remember this. So, all these parameters has to crush, crumble. We have to be able to melt it, put it into a mold. All of these parameters. Yeah, and plus that, plus we had to get it from the shop to the set in one piece Multiple. without it breaking. Multiples. Multiples. So that, yeah. Okay. So, I call this phone number. Yes. Hello. I, got, I said, hi, um, my name's Ted Haynes. I'm calling from John Beekler's MMI. Um, we're working on an effect here, and John wanted me to call you and ask you if you have anything like 
and I figure I'm calling like whatever makeup shop here in town. I don't know. I'm an idiot. I'm I'm 20 years old, and I'm calling and I'm talking to this man. He sort of has this sort of this, this thing like that, and he goes, "Well, uh, Ted, how long have you been at John's?" And I told him, "I was like like a week." <laughs> he goes, "Oh, so how long have you been in town?" I said, uh, "Like a week." And uh, I said, I'm really terribly sorry. I said, um, John just gave me this phone number. I don't know who I'm talking to. And he goes, oh, I'm, I'm very sorry. This is Dick Smith. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's Dick Smith. And I remember talking to Dick and just, okay, so I should do this, and I should go over to, like, try a sciences yeah. and pick up this. Oh, okay, and I'm writing this down nervously and just talking to Dick. And well, okay, very nice to chat with you, Ted, and yeah. let me know how they get. I'm going to send you a few things, and I want you guys to test this out. And if it works, I'll send you a bunch more and all this. Good to talk to you, Ted. And I, I hung up the phone. I went into Beekler's office. I was like, you had me call Dick Smith, for God's sake, and you didn't tell me who I was calling. I thought I was calling, like, whatever. So, But i got to say, back, here we go, back in that day, <laughs> there was a lot of, you could just call people, right? And it wasn't it wasn't a lot of things. It was just you're just randomly calling like head people from all this stuff, and sure. and everybody was like willing to you know mostly willing to help out. It was yeah, like really cool. Smith. Yeah, you know, it's like <laughs> I think Beaker had me call him once for something sure. like that. I think I got the blood recipe from him. Okay, yeah. And then they started mixing blood for the MMI for the next well, four years. You were yeah. the blood guy. I mean, that's why I just remember you were the guy that came up with the the rigs and the gags and stuff yeah. like that. So. But what, what, what led to that? I'm asking everybody, like, what what brought you, where'd you grow up, and what brought you out here? All right, well, I'll make it, uh, try to make it less boring and kind of short, but uh, I... Uh, Jazz it up. Lie a bunch. All right, I'll lie a bunch. Okay, well, um, <laughs> when when I came over on the Amistad ship, which goes into something <laughs> okay, else that we go into later. Yeah, we go. No, I grew up in Jersey. Uh, family moved to California when I was 16, and I moved okay. to Fresno. Okay. And I just really started getting into making Super 8 films because it's something I wanted to do. Right. And uh, I happened to meet a guy by the name of John Bullich. Right. And John and I became really good friends and we started doing uh, Super 8 movies up in Fresno. And John would sometimes like supply uh, blood gags and, and we'd, we'd do everything. I mean, like very stunt heavy. There's one day <laughs> where, one Saturday, I said to John, uh, there was a bunch of us sitting together they were drinking beer out in the fig orchards and I said, Hey, I made a bomb that I want to blow up. And he goes, uh, I got some film. And he's like, well, I can make a slit neck thing. And the next day we shot a 30-minute movie, but we actually blew up a hunk of dirt road in Fresno. I had no idea how big this bomb was going to be. Do not make your own explosives. <laughs> no, no, no. It was, um, it, was, it was a fig orchard. It was okay. There's no one around. And, and they squished the figs. And no figs, figs were hard to make yeah, this film. <laughs> make for fig newtons. It's all good. Um, and then uh, one night, uh, John and I were actually uh, big fans, gore fans and stuff like that. I, w I wanted to get into directing, but, you know, the gore thing was really cool. And we would go see Dawn of the Dead at uh, the midnight movies all the time. Right. And all this kind of And we're sitting there one night drinking beer in the fig orchard. And John's like, George Romero ever does another zombie movie, I want to work on it. You know, and I go, well, if you're going to work on it, I want to be a zombie in it. And exactly almost two years later to the date, John got hired to work on Day of the Dead. And uh, I did him a favor Tom with Tom Savini. Tom Savini. Because I met Tom because John had an opportunity to work on Friday the 13th part for if he could be hired as a local in LA and I was living in LA at the time and he asked if he can crash so he could work on the film and that's where I got to meet uh, Tom Savini and all those guys and to return the favor after that when John got on Day of the Dead he goes I have a hotel room it's got two beds why don't you come out to Pittsburgh we'll try to get you on the film and um, I went there and I worked as an unpaid assistant on Day of the Dead with Savini and that's where I met Howard and Greg and right. uh, uh, Everett Burrell and Dave Everett. Kinley all those guys <laughs> And that started the, my career. Yeah. yeah. And then you came right back out here after that. I came right back out here. Yeah. And for a while there, I was doing odd jobs, like, you know, literally bussing tables, going back sure. and forth in Fresno, had no address. I did get an apartment again uh, eventually, but uh, I was uh, at Beekler's answering the phone because John, I met John through John Woolwich on Ghoulies. And then I, what the hell do you want? Yeah. Well, <laughs> the home of those irrepressible yet lovable Ghoulies, yeah. <laughs> But um, the Tom, uh, Johnny and uh, Mitch uh, Gabe Bartalis were in Rome doing the dolls, and um, John was in uh, also doing Troll, and then Mitch Devane was doing Eliminators in Spain. And Mitch called me up at the shop and says, "We need we need extra people out here, and uh, call these numbers, see if you could find." And um, so I call the numbers, nobody was available. And Mitch says, "What about you?" And I go, 
uh, yeah, I'm available, and I had a passport, and I was on a flight to Madrid within 24 hours, and wow. I spent the next three months there, and then Bill Butler joined like a few days later, and we somehow impressed the Empire people, and we ended up, <laughs> Bill and I ended up doing all the Empire films in Italy for the next three years. Oh, wow. So by the third film I worked on, I was technically the representative on set for MMI for From Beyond. Okay. And that's the third film I worked on. That's amazing. Yeah. That and I had no idea what the hell I was doing, but, you know, we right. did it. <laughs> well, I think that's 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 part of, like, what we do. I yeah. mean, usually somebody comes into a shop, they present you an idea, it's like, hey, here's our thing, and we want you to build it, and you just kind of nod, and, yeah, mm-hmm. sure, we can do that. Mm-hmm. And they walk out, and you go, how the hell are we going to do that? <laughs> Tie on tubing, quick. <laughs> you know what? As many gags are saved with uh, super glue, duct tape, and fishing line. I mean, that's most of the time how you do everything I, in the 80s. <laughs> I learned it from him. Like, I mean, it's like every time I go to set, it's like, <laughs> I'm going to throw in some zip ties, some tie gun yeah. tubing, some duct tape, because it's what was always, in, you know, along with the other things I normally use. Yeah. But it's like, I know I'm going to use bailing wire. I know I'm going to use zip ties. If you have a syringe and tie gun, you can make anything bleed and you have an effect on <laughs> exactly. camera. Done. <laughs> I don't know how many times we do it. I yeah. mean, it just, it seems, well, when I got hired on at John's, at John Beekler shop, you know, it was all the, it was seed people. It was demonic toys. Yeah. I worked on a, one, it was like, other shots that we had pickup shots for like this thing called Netherworld yeah okay and that was just nothing but blood yeah. I mean it was blood gags galore and I I, I, I learned from, from my blood gags it's like you know, you know thin enough blood enough pressure yeah <laughs> and make the tubes go from bigger to smaller all bigger, the time bigger to smaller all the time it'll be a lot easier to do all that kind of stuff so yeah and I mean so we, we started out at Beekler's and I, I just have to create used to remind me all the time the only reason I'm actually sitting here still in Los Angeles working is because of you. Don't, you, don't blame me. I mean, yeah, we're, we're, on, we're on the, no, 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 the, the a, Google Net right in, now. You know, in, a, in the Google Net. <laughs> uh, no, in a good way because I, I believe when I first got hired, there was a guy named either Tim or his name might have been Ted. It was another Ted. Another Ted. Yeah. And we're not talking about Ted Smith. No. It was, it was no. Ted, uh, so there, oddly enough, there were three Teds at once. But um, it was another Ted. And Beekler couldn't get it straight as to which one. I don't know if there was a good Ted and a bad Ted. I don't know if they no, were there was. No, there was an evil Ted at that point. No, no, no. That's no, somebody no. else. And that's a whole, that's yeah. somebody else entirely. It was yeah. just another Ted. And uh, Beekler said, well, we got to get rid of one of these guys because we can't keep them on the payroll, but we want to keep one of them. And he used to call one of us Tim or something by a different name. And I think you said, wait a minute, which one are you talking about? The guy with the really long hair, he goes, no, 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 that's the one you want to keep. You got to get rid of the other guy. He's useless like that. So you you fought for me to be kept. So that's why I'm still here. Same with me. And then that's why I get invited to this. So thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> so yeah, we go from, you know, worked at MMI. Yeah. And then... KMB, right? No. In between Alchemy Effects. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. My, the, the, the shop I ran for uh, Charlie Band. For we, Charlie Band. And that's where I sent you to luxurious uh, Romania. Ah, yes. Yeah. Romania. No. And uh, I went to Romania twice. Yep. We did... First one was Mandroid. And then Invisible. I did... Uh, no. Uh, Jake and Melanie, I think, maybe went back on that. And oh. I went back for the uh, double feature of Transfers 4 and 5. That's right, that's right. With Tim Thomerson. Yep. I got I got beat up. You got, see, yeah. that's that's the thing, you know, yeah, you, got, you went to Romania and you end up on camera getting beat up by Tim Thomerson. I mean, and that was probably the best scene in that movie. I, I love <laughs> it. It was, it was, it was an elaborate fight scene where I actually got a couple of jabs in on him and Tim was a little bit off that day and he wasn't jabbing quite right. I got, I got slightly punched in the face once. I got really punched in the gut <laughs> once and the stunt guy kept on, let's take these moves out. Let's take these. Tim's just going to slam your head into the bar and throw <laughs> you backwards. And that's what it came down to. It was just a real quick movement. Like, uh, so it came down to that. Me with my big, long, luxurious hair, yeah. that really, really crazy biker, uh, leather biker jacket. And the rest of the time was all behind the scenes, me and Joe Podner. Yeah. Um, Joe Podner doing makeup effects and me just kind of wrangling. The tie on tubing. Was it the chlorophene? <laughs> oh, the chlorophene. That's right. Foam fabricated yeah. creature. I, I got to sculpt the head on that. I mean, that was the best thing about working in these smaller shops. Well, Gal- at- Galloway was one of those shops where everybody had a key. You came in wherever you wanted. We all knew what the project was. We all knew right. we had no money, and we all knew we had a deadline. And it's right. like, 
as much frisbee playing, long lunches, and <laughs> fights with uh, PVC pipes PVC with insulation on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's all fine, but as long as the job got done, and everybody did their job, it was, yeah. and we had a great time. And it was fun. I mean, yeah. I know you were essentially our, our boss, and we all kind of looked up to you, but it was like you were out on the floor building right along with us, and you had to build the gags, we built the gags, and it was just, you know, we all just kind of kept each other in check and, yeah. and, and did some really fun, fun stuff. Did you ever get to go to Romania? No. Did you want to go to Romania? No, no. <laughs> I said to no, I, I to all you. No, I when, when, I when, did my time. When we did that stuff in Italy, I was like, all right, if I got to go to Italy, I'll go to Italy for three years. Yeah. I'll twist my, you know, but yeah. Romania, it's like, who the hell wants to go to Romania? <laughs> and that's right after it. it, it Romania uh, was beautiful. If anybody from Romania was oh, watching, yes, yeah. Bucharest. This was at the Actually, time when when um, when the the regime just changed, it so was, there was nothing there. We were there one year, I think, after the um, the revolution. Yeah, after Ceausescu was yeah. outed and all that kind of stuff, and there was nothing. It was no. it. Would, there was no fast food. There was there was nothing. There was there was nothing. There, we, I remember the director, yeah. uh, uh, Jack Jack Erskard. Jack uh, Erskard uh, for the Invisible. One, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, they had to build this entire like lab set with all this high tech looking stuff, and they, they, and you guys were telling me they don't even have spray paint there. Right. And uh, I remember my friend Lex had a stage, and uh, he had all these like computer boards laying around. I says, Lex, let me buy some of these off you, and I packed them all up and sent them to Romania. I said to Jack, to screw them up on a wall and backlight them, and yeah. it'll look high tech. And, and I did. think that's what you guys a lot, did. And, and a lot of it. And that's what it was. It's like they had nothing. So yeah. yeah. And they used they reused those on uh, transfers because I remember them on transfers as well. Because they just kept it around, but th- yeah. I mean, those those are great times. I mean, those are the best shops to work in, those are the best films to work on. Yeah, you learn everything. And and I don't want to sound like like the thing there, but I was just kind of reminiscing with the. Like, there's another writer in England that I've been working with on a lot of this Empire stuff, and it's like back then, like you were saying, you were in a small company of people, mm-hmm. and you weren't just the makeup effects department. You were doing anything you can. You're yeah. on on camera. You're helping build the sets. You're building all kind of effects. You're doing, yeah. you know, you're doing everything just to try to get the job done. Well, it, I and mean, that was when we were on set. The reason I got beat up by Tim Thomerson is that we had exhausted all of the other extras that we were using, the actors in Romania that spoke really good English, mm-hmm. um, and so. I don't know. Is that correct English? Really good English? Yeah, it's it's you know pretty good. So anyhow, yeah. I was the next best thing. It's like how about the guy from Wisconsin with the the funny accent? They can't say baby poodle. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, honestly, that's how Bill Butler and I started acting a lot of the Empire films because yeah. we would be there on the set and they'd have all these um, the local like playing the bit parts in broken English and you know yeah. we went to the casting directors. You know, for some of these parts, we're here, we're being paid anyhow. Why don't you throw us a bone and let us do this stuff? Yeah. And then we ended up being in just about every film out there. Right. So it was like, you know, and that led into the suit acting career. I, I tried I tried my best on every single Charlie Band film that I got on camera somehow. And I remember in, what was it, in uh, Demonic Toys, I actually doubled the actress's feet running. I My feet fit into her boots. So I don't know how big her feet were. But the, she had like boots that came up, to, and they needed a shot of her like running up the steps. It was real close up. It was like, I'll do it. I got to be in this film. And every full moon film, it's like I, I had my hand in there doing something. Yeah. And I tried. But yeah, you did a lot of suit work. Yeah. Like, and, and it's funny because you say that. It's like, you know, that later on in the career when I started working on bigger films like at KB, like Transformers and something like that, right. you know, it's puppeteering. You don't get a chance to do that. And there was only one instance where Michael Bay said, You, and he points to me and he goes, do this and it's like okay and I had to put on a lab coat and I had a shot of my hand poking a hole in the scorpion octail and that's the only cameo I had in any of those Your hand. just my hand holding this little tool so did you stand up in the, in the, in the theater that's my hand yeah. <laughs> look everyone <laughs> see <laughs> no and I mean that's that's the fun part it's just you know yeah, yeah, yeah. hey you that you speak English you yeah look, right you know do this but yeah, you had a pretty decent suit career, though. I mean, you were cellar dweller, right? Yeah. For John Beekler. For John Beekler. And that's like a cult classic. Um, you were the. Uh, uh, I made you the foam fab bear suit in Demonic yeah, Toys. Demonic Toys, yeah. Yeah, but you did other other suits. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, there's a lot of stuff like uh, in Species where she has the flashback where there aliens are having sex in space. I mean, right. that was me and a stunt girl inside a giant water tank. Right. And we spent all day underwater, just with no ear hoses. We were just holding our breath. You know, just kind of mating and, yeah. um, and floating in space. And it was, uh, you know, that was pretty cool. Um, one of my favorites, and I, I love telling this story, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to indulge you on this, is uh, Little Nicky. 
because okay. I got to play Gary the Bigfoot in that, okay. and um, uh, that was a, a great thing because I got a ch I got a chance to work directly with Rodney Dangerfield. Okay. So there's a scene where we're all playing poker. It's the first scene we're doing with Rodney Dangerfield, and we do the rehearsal, and Rodney doing his lines and stuff like that. I go, okay, let's let's do the action, and I'm in a gorilla suit, mind you, a Bigfoot suit, and we're playing cards. And they yell action, and Rodney Dangerfield starts riffing. He starts make ad libbing everything up, and I'm just sitting there going like, "Oh my God, this is the greatest <laughs> thing ever!" And I'm just watching him. And then I realize after about thirty seconds, "Oh crap, I'm on camera. I better start doing something." <laughs> I better run with yeah. a gorilla and play some cards. So yeah, so I got to you know work directly with that was that was weird because. I got to be on screen directly. Adam Sandler, Dangerfield, Harvey Keitel, right. you know, Kevin, De all these people. Well, it was in like a big weird monkey well, suit. Well, a big weird monkey suit. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I got to play with the boobs on Kevin Nealon's head. Well, why? You know, of course. Well, yeah. Highlights of a career. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's been other stuff. I did uh, a few things for... Uh, what Tales from the Crib? Uh, Tales from the Dark Side. Tales from the Dark Side. Tales from Which the Dark just, Side. They just came out with the... Blu-ray on that, okay. and uh, they have they we they have some interviews in the back behind it. So you're the gargoyle, in and that. the gargoyle, and the mummy, and the mummy. Yeah, right. Which is great because that one was uh, it was Julianne Moore's first film, and oh, really? Steve Buscemi and okay. Christian Slater, and you know, you know, now I sit there watch TV going like, yeah, I stacked with these people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And James Remar because I played the, okay. I played double Ray Don Chong as the gargoyle. Right. And, um, you know, I didn't really read the script much because, like, someone else, I think uh, Mark Rappaport had a, a slave control head that was okay. doing the mouth and doing the dialogue. So for I the I, gargoyle. For the gargoyle. Yeah. And uh, we're doing the scene, and it's all of a sudden I'm holding James Remar, and he's saying, but I loved you. And I'm saying, but I loved you, too. And I go, hey, I'm doing this love scene with James <laughs> Remar. This ain't good. <laughs> Why not? But, yeah, it was, it was cool. Yeah. It was really cool. So when, when you were growing up, you said from Jersey, right? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, that, that love for film, that love for a certain genre of film, I mean, was that always there? Um, I mean, when, when do you remember that spark, like, kind of like, I, I got to be in the film industry, I have to do this? Uh, well, I was trying to think about what I was going to do for a career. Right. And um, At I, what age? This is, this is, like, probably, like... Seven? No, this is, like, later on. I mean, yeah, it, the thing is, that stuff always intrigued me, I, I, yeah, the movie stuff. Sure. It's like, it, that was always there in my head, and whether I was conscious of it or not. But, you know, I was thinking, like, well, you know, I, I, I started going to school to, like, uh, college and stuff to uh, take uh, criminal classes to be a cop. Or, I remember uh, that. Crime, crime, uh, right. uh, crime, crime scene. Crime scene guy. Yeah. And, you know, and I said, well, why am I doing this? I go, well, because there's, you could be, do gunfights and car chases and stuff. I go, well, wait a minute, if I do it in a movies and no one's really <laughs> shooting at me, and it's like, you know, maybe <laughs> movies is a better the idea. Odds of not dying in a movie. Yeah, yeah. a lot better, yeah. <laughs> so that's what... So, that, so what, what age is that, though? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, that was probably in college, but I, I, okay. I started making the Super 8 movies when I was, like, sure. in single digits. And, you know, that was something that I When you were blowing up did. Fig Fields. And well, no, that would, no, Archers. that was in New Jersey. I was... Oh, that was in Jersey when you were blowing up... No, no, no. Big Fig Fields was in Fresno, but okay. I started doing, like, little stop-motion things in Jersey okay. on my train set in the basement and right. things like that. So I, I started at a really young age. On the train set. See, Alan Scott said the same thing. Everybody mutilates their train sets. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jersey. It's snowy. It's cold outside. You got to do something during I the winter. I did my fair share of blowing stuff up in Wisconsin. And I watched the Adams family, and Gomez was always blowing up his train. So you know, you try to figure out how to make the most creative train wrecks. It's right. like, come on. You know? Now, I mean, because did you, you were you were transitioning like with uh, Full Moon and all that? Did you do directing or second unit directing or? Uh, I did a lot of, well, I did a lot of uncredited second unit directing, right. like. Um, <clears throat> Like, you know, it's like one of the things, like, and the movie Prison, um, right. uh, the, which is one of my favorites that I did in that, that Empire Age. Um, a lot of the things that the guy getting, I don't know if you remember, the guy getting wrapped up at the yes, farm yeah. that comes to yeah. life, like, a lot of that was all second unit, and I did a lot of that stuff, as well as John Beekler, you know, we, right. we were all kind of directing and calling a camera, and then I shot the, the behind, or the uh, monster stuff for Zarkor and Craw for Charlie Band. Yep. So that was an official director job. I got to build a miniature for that. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, which blew up really good. It blew up really good. <laughs> which, we, don't do that at home. Don't do no, that. No, don't do that. Let professionals handle yes, that. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. That's how I lost this one right here. <laughs> That's what the Dick Smith came up, because in the scene in the Tales from the Dark Side with the mummy, yeah. they, they, Christian Slater breaks off the one figure, and he right. came on the set to see what was going on, and I have standing there because my finger was tucked in the glove. Hey, you look just like me because he was missing a <laughs> finger, and it was like, yeah, okay, pretty good. <laughs> it's a good, one. it's a good. One. Am I, I'm, I'm rambling on now, aren't I? No, no, we're supposed to be rambling. Oh yeah. A very important question from Henrik. Okay, yeah, all right. Henrik Venrus. I Venerous. would like to know. Let's see, where is it? 
It is. Oh, shoot. Now it's... Oh, Henrik. I know. He's... We've got... Um, sorry, I should have been better prepared for this. Okay, Deke, he would like to know Ultraman versus Godzilla and Jack Lord versus Steve McQueen. Who would win? <laughs> Ooh. Well, uh... You know, I'm sorry. It's got to be Godzilla. You know, but even though Ultraman, but but Jack and Jack Lord, I'm sorry, Jack Lord kicks ass. You know? <laughs> I mean, Steve McQueen is cool and all, but Jack Lord you know, for a TV show, then he's hanging out of a helicopter with a machine gun, shooting at Lincoln Continental, well, blows up, and goes off a cliff. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, you know, because Queen never did that. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> Okay, I'm sure yeah. it will be. <laughs> Very controversial. Well, I mean, I could see where Ultraman, that's that's a tough one, because Ultraman is the superhero, whereas Godzilla is sort of the anti-hero until later so, on. Until later on. Yeah. Yeah. So So that was always a fascination of yours as well, like the, the Japanese, the, the Godzilla and all that, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. The, the, that, that and anything. I was it because, did you, did you love the monster so much, or did you just love the fact that they were blowing up cities, and you went, I want to blow up some miniatures? I, I, I love the fact of the work that went into it, because even sure. at a young age, I'm looking at this going, like, they built an entire city out right. here, and they got a guy in a suit, and he's destroying it. And it's right. like, this is the coolest thing ever, you know? I think that was a part of it when I was a kid, and I mean, I... I loved Godzilla, and I didn't care for it all that much because there was a schlockiness to it. Because at my age, it was like, oh, they're all miniatures. Yeah. And it's a guy in a suit. And then I would go, those are all miniatures. And that's a guy in a suit. Yeah. And I mean, you could see it. You know, yeah. whereas these days you go to a Godzilla film, whatever, it looks fine. You know, the buildings are blowing up, and it's got, you know, it's all digital. Yeah. And I would so love to see a guy in a suit doing that now, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, you know. Love a miniature blowing up. Love a man stomping on buildings. I'm sorry, I was distracted. I thought there was a blood on the floor. No, 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 like, no, what no, happened to the last guest? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the throat was slit. Mm. Um, no, so... Um, but yeah, yeah, I, but I, I used to do too as a kid. I used to go through the TV guide because back then, you right. only, yeah, you had the channels and you had it like plan it out. So I'd highlight which movie if there are two movies at the same time, right. which one is the better one that you get to watch, you know? And, and you know, King Kong versus Godzilla always beat out pretty much right. anything else. And then I'd look at the description and look for anything that might have a car chase in it. Because I don't know, I was a big fan of car chasing right. too, and so uh, you know, there might be some crashes. There might this. be some, yeah, you know, it's like <laughs> that's funny. Now we we're talking, so we 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 moved on like meeting you at MMI. Working for you at Alchemy, yeah, and I remember when you you kind of hired me out. It was almost like the old uh, studio system. Is I, I got a, a caller. You got a I call. I sold you. Yeah, you kind of lo <laughs> you loaned you loaned me out. You loaned me out. It was uh, you got a call from Howard Berger. Oh, okay, yeah. And uh, Howard and I was just in the shop doing nothing. I was doing my own little project or whatever like that. And I think it was the only one there. You were there. Howard calls and says, "You got anybody over there that can do some foam fabrication." And I was starting to like dabble with that kind of stuff because we had been working with Ken Hall. Right. I got to, you know, and I'd been doing foam fabrication back when I was a kid, not realizing that that could transition into a job. Yeah. You yeah. know, because it's like, I didn't know. I was just making stuff out of upholstery foam. You know, it's like, little did I know that it's like, you do this for a living. You know, it's like, oh, okay, interesting. So anyhow, Howard calls and they needed some work done on a dead deer for Wyatt Earp. Okay. And so yeah. you loaned me out and said, oh, yeah, I got this guy here right now. He does some foam stuff. Ted, go to K&B. I just didn't want you in the shop anymore. I, that's what I thought. You were drinking all my coffee. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you sent me over to K&B. Howard said it was a, a two-week job, mm -hmm. and I was there for five years. Yeah. But then you followed not too long after that. I mean, and you had been working with Howard and Greg and Bob oh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. years. Yeah. So, I mean, you were kind of skipping back and forth, but then you had Alchemy to run. And then Charlie, I think, shut down Alchemy. Yeah. And then that went to somebody else in town, and then you you hopped right over to K and B. Yeah, and where you kind of took up the same job that you had been doing for Beekler and for Alchemy, coordinating films, coordinating effects, and still you're on the floor building, and going to set and all that stuff, and so. getting the abuse from angry directors <laughs> and you know, well, all that kind of stuff. That's that, what we always get. You know, it's just. Which, which leads us to the thing that we were yeah. just talking about before, that uh, one of the things that you and I did at K&B together yeah. was, uh, which I barely remember until just now, was Amistad. Amistad. Steven where, Spielberg's Amistad. Yeah. It's like Howard yeah. came up to me, I think, in the afternoon. He says, look, I have a an interview to do with Kevin Sorbo for Hercules or something like that, but we also have to do this gag for the Steven Spielberg movie. I'm going to go do the interview with Kevin Sorbo. You go to the Steven Spielberg movie. I'm like... <laughs> What? <laughs> and then you and I went, and we had a puppeteer, the dummy of the captain that was, that was captain. being killed. So that, that was the thing. I built the dummy. 
And yeah. so it was a gag where the, the, the captain actually the sat, board. sat in a chair sort of like this under the deck of the yeah. ship. And so I built a, a, a chest, stomach, legs, and then we were under the deck puppeteering the legs, like making them kick around because that's the scene where he gets killed. Yeah. And I remember I had um, I built, I think it was like a PVC pipe or something like that. It was about like so big, you know, six inches or so. And that was filled with blood. It's always got to be a good blood game. Yeah. And so tubes went into the blood, and then he stabs the uh, the captain of the ship. Right. Which, who's laying under the thing. And there's a board protecting a big sheet of plywood that we had built into there. So, you know, real knife is going down. Right, because he can really go at it. Yeah, yeah, he can go at it and go into there like that. And I was pumping blood like crazy yeah. underneath there. And I remember we, we did one take, and they had wind blowing. And there was like maybe a little bit of rain or some. And I remember being up on deck. I don't know if you remember this. We're standing and just respectfully, you know, watching and listening to Spielberg, Steven Spielberg, talk about. And they had these dump tanks that hold yeah, hundreds, hundreds, of hundreds, of hundreds, of hundreds and water, hundreds yeah. of gallons of water. And Steven Spielberg turns to the effects guy and says, "Are those full?" And they go, "Yeah, they're ready to go. Let's do those on the next take." So we're working under the grate, like yeah. a wooden grate that normally you would load onto a ship like supplies or whatever. The captain's lying on that. We're directly below that. And we're like, they're gonna dump like a thousand gallons of water on top of us. And we're like, we hope the body doesn't just <laughs> go away. We hope this and that. And so we're under the set with Scott Patton as well. Yeah. And Scott's the only one that thought he was really smart. He was gonna put a poncho on. So he has this plastic poncho. And it's like, you guys are gonna get soaked. And we're puppeteering, and blood is like running oh, our arms. There was so much blood so coming much down blood. from the floor. So much. We're, I'm pumping yeah. like crazy. Yeah. You're doing the, the legs. legs kicking. Yeah. Patton is down there doing like a leg or something like that, and I'm pumping blood yeah. like crazy as he's like stabbing the uh, the captain of the ship, and he, you hear "Don't take one, don't take two like that, and it's just like Bruce, like that, and it comes down that hole. We don't get that wet, like maybe from like the knees down. Yeah, we were still wet from the thing, but we didn't get the brunt of it. Right, yeah. right. Scott Patton, I remember looking over when that water hit, and he was standing, and he looked up, and that poncho just filled with water right in his head and shot down on the inside. <laughs> and I remember him standing there after they yelled cut, taking the poncho, and he was drenched from head to toe in water. And you and I have like some water like yeah. on our knees and our shoes going... <laughs> but I, I remember, I think I gave you a ride that day to say, because I was shot out in Van Nuys at the, by the Van Nuys Van, Airport. Van Nuys Airport. And uh, Van I remember Van. that, I think both of us were like dyed red from yeah. head to toe from all the blood. And there was just like, I had the clothes, they just said, no, and they just threw them out. And oh, I, think, yeah. I think I was bright red for at least two days. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. It was so much blood. I, another blood story, though, with Beekler, with um, seed people. We shot in this orchard way out one yeah. night. And I mean, it, it might have been like a 23 hour day. It was a crazy day. And it was blood and it was goo and all this stuff. And I'm driving, I lived in Thousand Oaks at the time. And I've come off the freeway, the 14, this and that, the 118, I'm gonna take up through Moore Park, whatever. So I'm on the freeway and there's nobody. It's like, you know, three, four in the morning, whatever. And all of a sudden I'm driving, I, I think decent speed, like I'm fine, 60, 65, whatever. And I'm 80. just, <laughs> I, oh, I'm, I'm so tired though, I'm, you know. And I'm just like almost falling asleep at the wheel. And a cop passes me. And then slows way down and comes back. And he goes back behind me and then comes up next to me. And he put his flashers on and he just pointed at me to pull over. He didn't look like, you're in so much trouble. You're going 80 miles an hour. <laughs> pull over. Like and confused. <laughs> confused. And I'm like, oh, what did I do? What could I possibly say? And I'm wearing a white t-shirt, by the way, too. That's what I was wearing on set that day. So I'm driving home, I'm, I'm just beat tired, and I just look up at him and I was like, what, what did I do? And he's just like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm really tired. I just got off of work. I'm working on a film. Are you okay? I look in the rearview mirror. I am caked blood in my hair, down my face like this. My white shirt has blood down this side, blood on the... And I remember going, oh, oh, no, 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 it's fake blood, it's fake blood, I'm a special effect. There's body parts in the back of the truck. <laughs> so I'm trying to convince him everything's fake by pointing out the body parts in the truck or in the uh, back seat of the car. And he goes, 
there's what? And I said, they're all rubber. They're rubber. I'm working on this movie. It's this and that. And, uh, like that. and he goes, you look really tired. I said, I just did like a 23-hour day or something. He goes, get home and get to sleep. Can you? Are you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm, <laughs> I'm awake now. I'm wide right awake right now. So. I, I got one that uh, when John Bullock and I did a movie in uh, Budapest, okay. uh, it was the Phantom of the Opera with uh, Robert Englund. Okay. And there was a scene where they had to get this actress, her head gets cut off, and I pull it out of a punch bowl. But they didn't cast the actress beforehand, so we had to do a head cast and the casting there. And it turned out really good. And we fiberglassed in nuts and bolts and things so it would sink to the bottom of the, 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 the bowl. And I remember that it was so good. I think this would be nice to have at Beaker's shop because it was we were doing it for Beaker, and it turned out really good. So I said, I'm, I'm going to take it home with me. So I packed it up in a box. I put it in my suitcase. And this is back when it was still communist over in uh, communist regime in Hungary. And when I when I got there, it was really cool because they set up all the VIP. You know, and they they called two people on the plane, Mr. Deke and Mr. So and So, come here. And I thought, oh, they're going to shoot us. But no, they, we had the <laughs> VIP passes. They gave us coffee. Everything was good. So I'm sitting in the waiting room, and all of a sudden they hear my name again, and they call me, and I go, oh, great, I'm going to get some free coffee or something like that again, and no, they put me in the little, the stereotypical, you know, communist gray room walls and stuff like that, and there's a bunch of guys with guns standing around, and the box from my suitcase is sitting on the table, and they just look at me, and one translator goes, open it, and then I realize what it is, and I go like, uh, let me explain this. I, this is a prop for a movie. It's nothing. And 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 they're just like, open the box. And I so I open the box really carefully, and I reach it, and I grab and pull out this severed head. You know, with all these guys standing around with guns, and I'm just like, this is it. And as soon as I pulled the head out, they all started laughing, and they thought it was the most hilarious <laughs> thing ever. And I was like, oh god. <laughs> and and you, yeah. Like, ah. <laughs> oh. oh, that was a ten. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that was a ten. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Great story. I've really been enjoying the story. I'm gonna, yeah. I, I'm gonna tell it. I, I'm gonna tell a story because you reminded me of John Bullock, and I know you were buddies with him and everything yeah. like that. And he, he was a really good guy, but he hired me. There was a stint that was like really tough. I don't know if you know this story or not, but I was at Beekler's and I just went in every day and I was working on my own thing. I was, I was sculpting something, and John was always great about that. Is I like come in, sculpt oh, something, yeah. Yeah. use some materials, mold it up, whatever. And so John Vulich calls Beekler's coordinator, John Foster, and uh, says, hey, you got anybody over there that can sculpt some makeups, do some mold making, anything like that? And Foster goes, yeah, I got a guy here right now. He's not working. I hadn't been working in three months. It Funny how, like, you're always sitting around places not working. Not working. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, okay, here's the other point to that. Yeah. Is keep visible. Exactly. Yes. Yes. John always yes. let us come in and build yep. things. You always let us come in. K and B always let us come in and build things because I was I was a young kid, and I was like, I don't have a shop, I don't have a garage, I don't have a, even an extra bedroom. I and you're still this. trying to make a name for yourself. So if they see that you're really there, you're working there. on it, and you're and you're putting the effort in, that's a big. How plus. many times was I it just in the shop working on my own thing, and yeah. something comes in, and it's like you know Mike saying, Hey, uh, we're gonna build this thing really quick. Why don't you just you're on the clock now? Yeah, you know, and that is just show the. Uh, uh, you know the go-getterness of like just yeah show yeah. your face so anyhow village calls up uh john foster and says uh well send a kid over here but don't not until like two because i'm not even out of the house yet yeah he, he didn't show up in the shop till <laughs> he was notoriously not in the shop until like, like 3 11 o'clock at night <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. yeah and then so my first night there it's it's 3 p.m until 11 or 12 at night one in the morning something like that i have no money I have not been working for three months. I live in Thousand Oaks and have to travel like a, a decent distance. And I'm like that first night home and I'm like watching the gas gauge and I'm like dropping quarters into my gas tank. Like literally I go to gas up back when gas was 98 cents a gallon. Yeah. And um, so I gassed up a little bit and before I left that night, Foolish goes, you're going to be back at Beekler's tomorrow. I guess so. Yeah. I'll call you tomorrow. I'll let you know what time I want you in. Okay, so I do this three days in a row, and I'm like down to nothing, down to no money. I know I'm going to sleep in my car that night because I don't have any gas to get home. Yeah. And it's, it's 9 o'clock at night. We're knocking off early that night. 9 o'clock because John wanted to go to a club, and I got, do you want to go to a club with me, Ted? Yeah. No, I, I can't go because, number one, I can't afford it, and number two, I don't think I'm legal to drink yet. Yeah. But um, that probably was at that time. Yeah. And uh, I was like, uh, no, I can't. I was like, and I, I sheepishly, you know, because I'm a kid, and I'm yeah. asking this shop owner, can I, can I borrow five bucks? 
He goes, don't you have any money on you? He's like, no, I don't. And I think it was the way I said it. He goes, do you have any money at all? I was like, no, I don't. And I said, I, I think I'm going to be packing up pretty soon and moving back home. He goes, Jesus, why didn't you tell me? What do you mean you don't have any money? And I said, well, I've got no gas in my car, and I, I'd been living off of saltines and peanut butter for two weeks because I couldn't afford anything. So saltines, peanut butter, no gas, and like a, John was so mad at me. Pulls out his wallet, starts pulling out $100 bills, gives that to me. And he goes, how much are you making at Beekler's? And I said, two fifty a week. And he goes, gee, you're way better than that. You're a good sculptor, you're a good mold maker, you come here like that. 500 bucks a week, 500 bucks a week. I'm doubling your salary. And he said, don't ever take less than 500 bucks. And he said, be here tomorrow, 8 a.m., $500 a week. I got you for two weeks. And he wrote me a check for my first week, plus handed me $300. And I cried all the way home. And I went to Sizzler and got a steak and all he his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, John saved my butt, you know. Yeah. Being, I went and worked for him for a couple more weeks and, you know, made a couple of thousand, you know, maybe a thousand dollars. Which back in there That's was a lot of that money. Was better I, I than, went from two hundred and fifty dollars yeah. a week to five hundred dollars a week and he, he kept me on for a little bit longer than what he said he was going to. And then something picked back up as it always does. Yeah. You know, either it was at Beekler's or I think when you started doing so we did subspecies or something like that, but out of John's shop. Yeah, we started in John's shop right you, right during the riots, when the riots yes, started because we were looking for a shop space and we were trying to buy supplies but everything was closed under curfew. Yeah. <laughs> No, it, it was, I mean, yeah, there's there's times where the guy, I mean, had you not stepped up and said, no, 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 keep that Ted, not that Ted, or John Village had and said, you know, yeah, you know, cause I, I may have not just just showing up at work the next day because I, I was out of gas somewhere, you know, like that, but, you know, there's a lot of people that just kind of save your bacon, and, you yeah. know, you were definitely one of those guys, and... <laughs> Well, you know, but I mean, we—it's nice though that it wasn't a complete evil presence in this <laughs> industry the whole never, time. Yeah. Never, never. No, you're you're one of my favorite people in the industry, and it's like uh, I've got so many great memories working with you all the way back to, all the way back to John Beekler's, all the way up to you know, recently. I mean, a yeah. worked with you over at uh, Steve Wang's shop. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, Which is funny because you know I'm actually doing pretty good because I'm just thinking about the seed people behind the seed and things that that we were doing and the first time on my camera and you're standing next to me and I completely forgot how to talk. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'm doing a little better than the last time we did something like exactly. this in front of camera. Yeah, it's because it, the character was what Tumblr. Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have to make it um, tumble. Tum yeah, tumble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just standing next to Mike and he's like, um, character's name is Tumblr and it. Um, it's sort of a... But, but I think those almost, were all like 20-hour days, too, oh, because we were driving out five, there, and yeah, it five, was like, five. yeah. It was, it was yeah. crazy. Well, Mike, thanks so much. Oh, uh, we're up for good. coming by. I think we're done. We're getting we're getting the... Wrap it up! Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, thank no, you. Thank thanks you for so having me. so much for coming. I thank, appreciate it. All right. So many great memories. 30 years Actually, we probably plus. could go a couple more hours, but... I think we could. Yeah, but eh, we'll, well, we'll save it for next one. Next time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll be back in just a short little bit. All right. Thanks, everybody.